let's discuss about uh, tracheostomy. As we all know, tracheostomy is nothing but creating an opening at the trachea region. Uh, it is actually done to, uh, you know, to restore the airway, to uh, remove that blockage of the airway. If there is any, uh, you know, uh, airway blockage, you know, to remove that blockage of the airway, we actually do this tracheostomy. Tracheostomy is actually a Greek word where stoma is to create an opening. Stoma is mouth, right? We create an opening in the trachea. That is nothing but tracheostomy. Uh, in a, before going into tracheostomy, I'll just deal with a small, uh, you know, thing of anatomy. Normally, trachea is present in the midline of the neck. The extensions are superior thyroid cartilage at C6 to tracheal bifurcation at the level of sternal angle, that is your T5. Normally, the C-shaped cartilaginous ring, rings are present in the trachea, usually uh, like this, they are about 16 to 20 in number. The length is 10 to 12 centimeters and diameter is about 15 to 20 millimeters in the diameter. Now, this is a picture showing a trachea anatomy where we can see tracheal cartilages there and also we can see the sternal bifurcation, you know, we can see the bifurcation at the level of uh, tracheal bifurcation at the level of sternal angle. So, till then we have this uh, trachea there. And in this process what we have, we have ocal cords, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, we have tracheal rings uh, in the process, you know, in that uh, you know, line of your anatomy. Coming to this functions of tracheostomy, why this, this tracheostomy does? This tracheostomy will actually create an alternate pathway for breathing. It will enhance your ventil alveolar ventilation, it will remove uh, any uh, tracheobronchial secretions that are present and it will also facilitate an intermittent positive pressure respiration and it will also be useful to administer anesthesia. It is usually it has wide range of indications like upper airway uh, obstruction pul for pulmonary ventilation, for pulmonary toilet, for elective procedures also we do this tracheostomy and other clinical indications include if there is any paralysis of your respiratory muscles, a large uh, you know, tumor is present at the laryngeal region. Uh, and if you if we have any obstruction because of uh, uh, trauma where patient is unconscious and cannot breathe uh, on his own if his uh, uh, you know the ventilation process is being uh, hampered in those cases we actually go ahead with this tracheostomy tracheostomy again we have two types one is tracheotomy tracheostomy tracheotomy is it will create an artificial opening in the trachea whereas tracheostomy we are actually creating a permanent or semi permanent opening in the trachea. Uh, this is a pic picture which is actually showing, uh, you know, the uh, anatomy of trachea again. In tracheostomy procedure, we again have two different types. One is permanent tracheostomy and temporary tracheostomy. Temporary tracheostomy is usually done to create an artificial ventilation in case of emergencies. Permanent tracheostomy is done in case of, you know, patients having any uh, large laryngeal tumors of the paralysis of the uh, breathing muscles. Okay, then we can go ahead with this permanent tracheostomy. And based upon the position of tracheostomy, we again have high tracheostomy, mid and low tracheostomy. And for tracheostomy, we have various tubes. There are, you know, tracheostomy tubes will be present. Now, these tubes are of various types. We again have long uh, tube with adjustable flange. We have single or double human tubes cuffed or non-cuffed tubes, tubes with suction wing or tube with sweep, speaking wall uh, provision, okay. These are the types of uh, 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 tubes, tracheostomy tubes. The first one we have fenestrated tube and non-fenestrated tube. These are again various types of your tracheostomy tubes. How do we actually perform this elective tracheostomy? It is actually performed under GA. Patient is laid supine with elevation over the shoulder. A horizontal incision is given between the cricoid cartilage and suprasternal notch. Okay, between the cricoid cartilage and the suprasternal notch, a horizontal incision is given. It here what happens is we actually divide or retract your thyroid isthmus. After we retract the thyroid isthmus, we will be able to see the trachea. We open the trachea and we insert the tube. Okay, this is elective tracheostomy procedure where. Yeah? A horizontal incision is given between the cricoid cartilage and a suprasternal notch. Other than this, we also do an emergency tracheostomy where within 2 to 4 minutes we will do with a vertical incision. Okay, in case of emergency tracheostomy where vertical incision will be given, within 2 to 4 minutes we finish off this emergency tracheostomy. There is something called cricothyrotomy or mini tracheostomy. Here we give a transverse, transverse incision over thyroid membrane. 
and this is usually kept only for three to five days okay in case of uh, minor uh, surgical procedures etc where we need a uh, uh, artificial ventilation for about three to five days we go ahead with cricothyrotomy or mini tracheostomy this is a procedure where we can actually see a slit where median cricothyroid ligament uh, you know there we can actually see a uh, procedure in an animated image where we have done a tracheostomy there the, in this picture also we can see cricothyroidomy where cricothyroid membrane is being incised and tracheostomy can be seen that is the position of tracheostomy there again okay uh, below the cricothyroid cartilage at the cricothyroid uh, uh, ligament we have done this cricothyroidomy and in the crico trachea where uh, below your uh, crico uh, cricoid cartilage and above the suprasternal notch we actually did this tracheostomy okay this is an animated picture which is actually showing the position of cricothyroidomy and tracheostomy now we have another procedure called as dilational percutaneous dilational tracheostomy in this percutaneous dilational tracheostomy it is preferred because of its time and cost efficient here we use a bronchoscope and endotracheal tube and guide wires and dilators are also used here however this has to be done only bedside especially in the icus it is not indicated in case of emergencies or in patients with thin neck okay and what are the complications of this tracheostomy you have seen the indications and we have seen the functions of tracheostomy what could be your complications of tracheostomy in complications again we have early complications and late complications this early complications can include bleeding because we are giving an incision there tube displacement or obstruction can happen secondary infections at the region of incision patients can undergo into apnea there can be a cardiac arrest or air embolism also and late complications include fistula formation can be present or tracheal stenosis can be present you can see a pneumothorax uh, patients can also develop tracheostomy scar or granulation tissue can be formed as a late complication now uh, there can be certain discomforts which have been associated with tracheostomy they include speech difficulty patient can have swallowing difficulty hemorrhage risk of aspiration dislocation and uh, you know blockage of the tube can be various discomforts that have been associated with tracheostomy once a tracheostomy is done what could be a post operative care first instruct patients attender regarding the care tell the patient attender how to suction train them about suctioning the tube dressing that has been uh, have to be done and also dressing where uh, you know it has to be uh, immobilized i mean the um, tube that has been inserted that is a tracheostomy tube has to be kept in place without any displacement okay the dressing uh, training also has to be done to the patient's attender also instruct the patient about the, the review where patient has to be brought to the hospital for regular uh, checkups and also for the uh, cleaning of the tube and also to evaluate the tracheostomy puncture or tracheostomy incision that has been given especially in cases of permanent tracheostomy okay this is about uh, tracheostomy we have seen about the procedure of tracheostomy its indications and we have seen the functions and also what are the complications of the tracheostomy thank you